Hello, this is Professor Abaswai. Today we will look at complex numbers <coughs> and their forms, their trigonometric forms, because this is in the context of the trigonometry class. So if you want to go and learn about algebra of the complex numbers, you'll have to go and watch some intermediate algebra videos, and I have it there. Okay, so let's start with very, very quick review of complex numbers. And the complex i is defined as squared of negative 1. Up until intermediate algebra, we were saying, oh, no real answer. But well, now we are giving an answer. And i squared is simply negative 1. This is all abstract. So let's kind of think of a plane where you have a real axis and you have an imaginary axis. And i is an imaginary number. So if the uh, complex number, and this one, the, the complex number, any number, is the standard form of it is, it has a real part and an imaginary part. Okay, so A plus BI, where A is on the imaginary axis and B is on the, I mean, A is on the real axis and B is on the imaginary axis. And this distance is, we can call it R if I want to. Okay, so. That is how an A plus BI complex number is shown on the real versus imaginary axis. Now, how can I add complex numbers? They are called complex numbers because they have a real part and an imaginary part. Um, let's say I have an imaginary um, a, a complex number of 3 plus 4i. And I want to add another complex number to it, 5 minus 2i. The way you do this, you add the real parts and you add the imaginary parts. 3 plus 5, that's 8. 4 minus 2, that's 2. You actually subtract the same way. 3 plus 4i. minus 5 minus 2i. You did the same way. Subtract the real part and subtract the imaginary part. If you want to multiply, you multiply by foiling. And let's write that. 3 times 5. 3 times negative 2, and you are doing it just like you foil a polynomial. 4 times 5. Here, pay attention. That is 4 times negative 2 i squared. Now get these two together. You have 15. You have a negative 6 plus 20. That is 14. And this one is negative 8 i squared. Oops, i squared is negative 1, so you have 15 plus 14i plus 8. 15 plus 8, 23 plus 14i. Just practice the algebra of it. And if you want to divide a complex number by, let's say, an imaginary number that only has i in it. You just write 2 over i plus 3. Then I want it in the standard form, which is a plus bi. So what I need to do is just multiply top and bottom by i. You're going to get i squared at the bottom and 2i on top. So this is the same as put the real part first minus 2i because I know i squared is negative 1. Uh, if you want to divide a complex number by a complex number, 
this is what you do. You multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the complex number at the bottom. Then you're going to get 2 plus 3i times 3 minus i. And at the bottom, you're going to get a squared minus p squared, which is 9 minus i squared, i, I squared. That's going to be i squared, so which is the same as 10. So all you have to do is just multiply the top. You're going to have 6 negative 2i plus 9i minus 3i squared, which happens to be plus. So you have 6 plus 3, 9. Negative 2 plus 9, that's 7. All right, this is a quick and dirty algebra review. But what is interesting is um, I need to find out about the modulus or absolute value of a real number. And this is how we specify that. If this is my real axis, this is my imaginary axis, and then this is my A, this is my B, and my complex number is A plus BI. And I show that as R. The modulus is, absolute value is A plus BI, which happens to be square root of A squared plus B squared. And I can use this uh, to do an example. For example, if they say, what is the modulus of 5 plus 2i? Well, let's go get that. So modulus of 5 plus 2i is simply square root of 5 squared plus 2 squared. 5 squared is 25, 2 squared is 4, 25 plus 4, 29. All right. Now, I can also look at this problem um, using trigonometry. Let's look at this problem again. Here's my real axis. Here's my imaginary axis. I have R. Now I'm introducing that theta. This is my A and this is my B and my complex number is A plus BI. Okay, this is called a trigonometric form of a complex number. Let's use trig to get some identities. I know that cosine <coughs> theta, it's opposite, I mean cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. A over R, sine theta, let's clean that up. Sine theta is simply opposite over um, hypotenuse. Okay, so, and I know that R equals A squared plus B squared, which is the modulus. So, and I also know um, these identities. Okay, so let's try to get what is the trig form of a complex number that's like that? So I know that this is going to look some like this if I put this in real and imaginary axis. This is my real. And this is my imaginary. So this is going to be 3, 1, 2, 3. And then red 3, which is kind of like um, a little bit more than 1, somewhere here. So it's going to look something like that. Here's my r. And this is going to be my theta. OK, well, let's write what this one looks like. Um, First of all, let's get the modulus. That's going to be this, 3 minus i rad 3, which happens to be square root of 9 plus rad 3 square. So that's going to give me 9 plus 3, which is 12, which is 3 times 4. Take the 2 out, 2 rad 3. Oh, OK. That is great. Okay, now let's get the theta. 
cosine theta is simply adjacent over hypotenuse. And then I can get, and then sine theta, and that, that would give me rad 3 over 2. Okay, what angle gives me rad 3 over 2? That one is actually uh, 30 degrees, remember? That's my reference angle. And where am I? So if this is 30 degrees, what is this going to be? This is going to be 330 degrees. Okay, so if I write my 3 minus I rat 3, and that's going to be R cosine theta plus I R sine theta. Or you can take the R out, cosine theta plus I sine theta. Okay, well, let's plug in what I found out. I found out that modulus was 2 rat 3. And this will simply be cosine of 330 plus I sine of 330. And what I took a comp uh, perfectly good complex number and made it more complex, uh, but this is the uh, trigonometric version of a complex number. And you can play with this, and then it will make some mathematical manipulations a little bit easier to deal with and the visualization of a complex number is a little easier when you think of it in terms of trigonometry.